Hello, welcome to my garden. I'm sitting actually on the compost compartment of this raised bed that I built on my driveway. It's one of three raised bed planters that I've got around my property. And I thought this was a pretty nice background for talking about the heavy subject that I'm talking about today. Today we're going to be talking about climate breakdown and um, what effect that has on my career as a scientific illustrator. If you're new here, my name is Lee Angold. I'm a botanical and natural science illustrator, and on this channel, I share watercolor techniques and tips, and sometimes discuss some really heavy topics. If this is content that you're interested in, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. If you've been following this channel for a while, you will know that I recently came back from a fairly long trip to Australia. I was attending the Guild of Natural Science Illustrators Conference in Brisbane, and I also traveled up and down the east coast of Australia. So I've got quite a bit of beautiful footage from rainforests and beaches, from nature sketching, and I'm looking forward to sharing some of that with you in upcoming videos, but I thought it was really important to get this video out first because it goes to messaging on this channel. While the footage from my trip is extremely relevant to my natural science illustration content, I do not want this channel to become a travel influencer channel. Over the past year, my concern about climate breakdown has reached a new high, and I think that travel has a huge part to do with that, and I am changing my focus professionally and personally. I've always loved nature and art and travel. It's what drew me to natural science illustration in the first place. Um, I dreamed of being able to travel to faraway forests um, and illustrate new species. I loved everything about that. So when at the last Genesi conference it was announced that the next conference would be in Australia, I thought it would be perfect. I think it was at the same meeting where the conference was announced that one of the organizers mentioned, in jest perhaps, that uh, now would be a great time to travel to Australia because with coral bleaching, this was our last chance to see some of the fringing reefs and the Great Barrier Reef. That was, again, half jokingly, the uh, same pitch that I gave my husband about why we should go to Australia. Let's go snorkel the ba Great Barrier Reef before it's totally gone. He agreed and we started planning our trip. And while I was very excited both about the conference and about our upcoming travels, um, that line kept running in my head. As I saw more and more charts about our carbon overshoot dates, um, what our reduction would have to be to maintain a sustainable planet. News about tipping points, forest fires, record heat waves. While I've always considered myself an environmentalist, in the past year it's really viscerally sunk in for me that unless we take drastic action immediately, within the next 10 years we will be reaching tipping points that doom the planet as we know it. Ecosystems that we are familiar with will be gone. Populations of native pollinators and delicate ecosystems are already collapsing and this spells out the end of not only natural areas but also it is a, an existential threat to us as individuals and as a species. It felt very, very strange buying plane tickets to travel around the globe to visit rainforests and coral reefs with the express knowledge that the reason I was doing this now is because these things would no longer be there because of people like me traveling around the world because of our lifestyle. It's also a pressing concern to me as a natural science illustrator. This also brought up questions for me about my role as a natural science illustrator. This is a career that I chose because of my love of nature. 
I wanted to discover more about the natural world and share it with people. And yet, not only was I traveling around the world, but also um, I make most of my income as a scientific illustrator from things like prints and cards, disposable items that people buy to admire once. So over the last few months, I've started really questioning. What can I do as an individual? Um, and how does my career fit into this changing world? While I don't believe that individual actions are ever the answer to global problems, I do need to live my own life in a way that I feel is a positive influence. Small actions, like this garden, um, really do help me feel like I'm on the right track. I see two roles for myself as a natural science illustrator in this changing world. The first role is as a service primarily to future generations. In speaking with my husband, he brought up that one of the most valuable things that I can do is document uh, species at risk and changing ecosystems um, to further the education and knowledge of future generations who won't be able to see the same things. The second role I see for myself as a natural science illustrator in today's changing world is as an educator and a communicator. Coming from a very urban upbringing, I grew up in downtown Toronto. When I started botanical illustration, I was blown away by how much I do not know about the natural world around me. Through botanical art, natural science illustration, and nature journaling, I've learned so much. I've applied my newfound interest and knowledge about plants to other aspects of my life, like this garden, which I built uh, based on permaculture principles, and I have a huge variety of different plants growing here. I love seeing all of the different species of pollinators and other animals that come to my garden. I've learned about other edible wild plants and have started foraging for some of my food. I've also started learning about species and ecosystems at risk in my local environment, not only in forests, but also in rural and urban settings. This is knowledge that I can share directly with people, talking about individual plants that I know about. I also want to foster the curiosity that has driven me to discover the natural world around me within other people. Encourage other people to take a closer look at the plants and animals around them. One of the things that I've learned through natural science illustration and in particular nature journaling is that you don't have to go far away to exotic locations and paint exotic species to have a really interesting range of subjects. The morning after I got back from Australia, I got up really early in the morning. I'm not usually a morning person, but I was quite jet lagged. I stepped out into this garden and right over there on my cucumber trellis was a yellow-bellied sapsucker. Now, I had just spent weeks admiring all of the weird Australian birds and here was a bird that I had never noticed before. I had never seen a bird like this and here it was in my own garden. I've really since seen this yellow-bellied sapsucker several times. Um, it seems to hang around and it's probably destroying the tree behind me. <laughs> Uh, but yellow belly sap suckers are an important species to the local ecosystem because a number of different species actually um, 
feed on sap from the holes that uh, sap suck suckers make in hardwood bark. And so I've decided that for my own career going forward, I want to a reduce my dependence on single-use commercial products like greeting cards. Instead, I want to focus on documenting biodiversity, interdependent relationships, and species at risk. And specifically, I want to focus in on my local area. As tempting as it is to travel around the world, there are other people in the world elsewhere who can draw their local species. What I can do best is focus on what's right here in front of me. While I have no intention of judging others for their travel choices, and while I'm not even prepared to swear that I will never travel a long distance again for work or for pleasure, I do think that it's very valuable for me to really focus on all of the beautiful nature that's right around me and really focus on that. Other people travel to here to see this and this is something that I can document in my backyard. I also want to continue to incorporate nature journaling as part of my natural science illustration career. I'm currently running a nature journaling class through a local arts center. I plan to run more of these. And I also want to encourage all of you, no matter where you are, to join me. I plan to be traveling less, but I'd still love to see all of the local natural life from all around the world. So you can share with me on social media are creating your own nature journal or um, scientific illustrations of the natural world around you, tag me using all of my tags. Or you can hashtag a changing world sketches. I'll be posting my own work and I also look forward to sharing all of yours. I hope this video wasn't too heavy for you. Let me know down in the comments below uh, what you are doing uh, to address climate change or what your concerns are as far as our changing world in your own life. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and ring the bell if you'd like to see more of my natural science illustration content in upcoming videos.